this is CR Game Scott uh, back again, folks. I have moved. Uh, I feel like I've moved Mount Everest for you to get you back into uh, Police Quest Two. Let's play. Um, I have been uploading things piecemeal, so that's why you haven't seen me for a little while. Or actually, I haven't recorded for a little while, but you've still seen my videos uh, every couple days. I have actually one more outstanding, uh, number fifteen, so number sixteen, uh, that I have not uploaded yet. So uh, that one's going to come up, and this one hopefully soon after. Now, folks, uh, why, now that might not seem like a lot. Uh, what the problem has been, there's been a number of problems, but the biggest problem has been that this audio and the video have not synced up. Now, we had that problem when I did that Gold Rush bonus video. I figure it's a bonus video, not, not a huge deal, not that much going on there, um, that it that I'm gonna bother um, trying to fix that. However, for these for the actual 10 minute let's plays, I think that comes annoying, and that's that's not the type of video I want to put up. So I have finally downloaded a better codec for Camp Studio. If this doesn't mean anything to you, that's fine. It didn't mean anything to me for about uh, until today. So um, anyway, hopefully things are synced up pretty well. I think there's a bit of a lag still, but I think it's something we can deal with. So anyway, last time we played, or last well, last time you saw a video, and last time I played. Um, which was a while ago for me, we found out about a burglary that took place with Jesse Baines. Um, I know, we found out about the murder that took place at the hotel, but there was related to a shotgun found in a burglary was discovered, and we are in the burglary office. So, um, folks, um, let's just move ahead with this game. And, uh, talk. All right. It says, Bond says, Simpson, this ain't the homicide office. All right, well, that's not what we want. Uh, ask about burglary. All right, so we're asking about the burglary. Oh yes, says Detective Simpson. We just worked the recent pawn shop burglary. Simpson continues, taking in that burglary were two shotguns, a thirty two automatic with silencer and ammunition. So that was the thing that uh, Baines had and it was related to some burglary. And then let's get the prints. <sighs> Ask about prints. Affirmative on the prints, says Jim. We dusted everything. Bane's prints were all over the shotgun. Now, one thing I do have to mention, I mentioned it when I tried to make this video beforehand, was that uh, why on earth did the guy not tell us after, you know, does he think we're just asking about the shotgun for our health? Uh, why on earth does he think that uh, we aren't interested in that? We have to actually ask for the prints. Well, gee, uh, you know, that uh, might seem relative. You know that we are dealing with the Bane's case. But anyway, that is the uh, situation with that. And let's uh, give um, evidence. So let's hand over everything we have. Okay, and I'm just going to skip through this so we can uh, keep moving. Pretty much everything we found beforehand, if you watch the other videos, everything in Cotton Cove, everything in the glove compartments, etc., etc., etc. Well, let's take a look over in the uh, narcotics office and see if anything has happened there. Steve tells you, Lloyd has taken some time off. I guess he has some problems at home or something. If you can recall from last time, Lloyd uh, was the fellow who had the narcotics problem. We advised him, hey, take some time off. And he so was uh, willing to oblige and um, apparently did so. Let's open cabinet, I guess. Um, Alright, so let's look at Colby. And this is how we figure out that we need to um, call Skelton that we did beforehand, and also that we have to eventually go there, as we'll learn. So, okay, this is the guy who is in trouble. He testified against Baines, who's a drug dealer, I believe, in the uh, last edition. Uh, you can't get his mugshot or anything, so let's just leave. Return file. Okay, we've replaced the file. Leave. Close drawer. Okay. Sorry, folks, if I sound a little aggravated. It just uh, took me a couple hours and spent a number of days just playing around, trying to get things done. Also, one other thing, uh, just a Police Quest 2 tip is not to go to the the locker room when you're not supposed to, um, is that you have to recalibrate your gun at this point. Now, I already did that off-screen. That was kind of annoying. I think it doesn't give you points this time to let you know that you definitely got it um, right, but I'm pretty sure that um, I did, um, because I got it to the point where if you make any more adjustments, it starts getting uh, unadjusted. So I think we've got what we need, and if not, then I will have to come back and play this through again. But you, fortunate viewers, will not have to see that. But hopefully we got it right. All right, so... Um, uh, sorry to hear about Maurice on a Captain Fletcher offers. If you boys have a solid lead, now's the time to bring it up. All right, so let's tell about lead. Captain Fletcher Hall says, while well, you came out, uh, I dug around in the files and came up with a list of folks who testified against Bain. They are uh, Colby, blah, blah, blah. Hmm, Captain Mose, everyone on the list testifies against Bain. They're now either dead or missing, except you were Colby. The question is, Sunday, will he go after you or Colby next? Colby's whereabouts are unknown to Baines. Captain Hall thinks so Baines will probably stick around to take another crack at you, Sonny. T 
tell about lead? I think we're supposed to give him something. That's, uh, um, show list. Oh, you know, I gave the evidence away. I think that's why he doesn't do that. All right, I should have given the evidence afterwards. Well, anyway, it's not a huge deal. Uh, anyway, so that's all we have to do here. And if you, if you give him, I think you have a list or something on you. If you give it the hit list or something, if you do that, he says, oh, it looks like you're next, and uh, you have free reign to do what you need to do to take care of it. And anyway, I'm not sure, 100% sure why you're supposed to know you have to go to Steelton, but you do. And Steelton is not in the next town over. I believe Steelton's probably uh, the Pittsburgh of this game. Um, drive Airport. Uh, just because it's called Steelton, it's the Steel City, and to drive, uh, fly there. Maybe it's just, uh, maybe I'm entirely wrong about that, but it, it sounds logical. I think Lynn's supposed to be L.A. I think it's mentioned it's in California or around there, it's supposed to be there. Um, but also in Game 4, you actually are no longer a detective in Lynn, and you're actually no longer studying bonds either, but you are in the Los Angeles area. So, um, I... I'm just deducing that. Maybe I'm entirely off, but that's that's my uh, view on this. So, um, uh, thanks, Keith. Keith forgot his toothbrush. So that's an indication that we are not going to be long for Litten. All right, let's open the trunk. Now, actually, one time I played this, was trying to create the Let's Play. I actually forgot to take the kit, and you actually might need that later on. I don't 100% remember. Um, but if you do need it, there's no coming back. So let's make sure we have it. Um, okay. Alrighty, and we are going to press the button. You press the button? Okay, so just make sure you do that again. Otherwise you get squashed and that's no fun. Alright, so we're back here. So let's get some tickets. Uh, let's get ticket to Stilton. Under sixty dollars. Well, you look at the folding cash in your mud clip, and you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you'll never board the flight for Steelton if you have to pay for it yourself. Keith jumps in and saying, "Hey, Sonny, put your wallet away. Let me call Captain Hall for authorization to purchase tickets." Keith shows his badge to the ticket agent and requests permission to use the desk phone. As Keith calls to arrange for purchase of tickets, your mind works furiously as you try to put together all the pieces of information you've gathered in the course of your investigation. Okay, man, Keith puts, tells you it's all set. Fletch has, purchased, has a purchase order for our tickets. It's getting it cleared with a ticket agent right now. Alright, so Keith comes in handy once. Alright, so now if you say get tickets, get ticket to Steelton. Yes, sir, the agent says we have been giving authorization for the police department to get both of you onto the next flight for Steelton. Here are your tickets, gentlemen. The flight will be boarding at gate 12 up the escalator and to your right. And once again, you have to actually say that. Why you have to say that, I don't know. Um, oh, we checked our field kit. Okay, so you definitely do need field kit. Um, so we checked that as baggage. Okay, that, that's good. Um, and we got the tickets. But after he talks to him, I mean, does he think we don't want it? I mean, why does he just give it to us right away? Just another annoying element. Um, Anyway, before he, uh, maybe yeah, we got some time. Let's let's uh, show badge to this guy. Remember we did this last time to woman. We should about, and he says, "What did I do wrong?" Uh, stop sign. Okay, uh, get list. And I'm just doing this right now. He says, "Yes, sir, officer. Here are all the car rental agreements for last week." And um, you pretty much just look it over, and there's nothing helpful. I'm just doing that because to show that you want to make sure to cover all your bases. Because actually, I forgot something beforehand, and we can actually get the points now, even though it's pretty much out of order um, with what with the events in the game. So there's actually another car rental counter over here, and you don't really discover it if you're just kind of hanging around the front part. I forgot about it, and the hint guide I had actually talked about a car rental counter, but didn't mention which one. So let's show the badge to this guy. Uh, you show your badge to the car rental agent. Yes, sir, Officer Bonds. What can I do for you? Get list. Here you are, sir. Be my guest. And he gives us that, and we look it over, and we find nothing of interest. But now here's the thing. This guy, this woman looks like she's engaged in a conversation with this guy over here. And Presumably she is. Maybe she's just looking at maybe just looking at some pamphlets. But actually, it's sort of to distract you from showing your badge to her. Show badge. Show the badge to the car rental office agent. She says, "Yes, sir, Officer Bonds. What can I do for you? Get list. Here you are, sir. Be my guest. 
flash a smile, the agent gives you her list of car rentals. Oh, Sonny Bonds, you're such a charmer. Looking at the rental agreement, you come across the familiar name, Louis Pete. You think to yourself that Punk has rented a car using the jailer's ID. I'd better jot down the information. Alright, well, I'm not jotting that down, that information, because it doesn't have a lot to do with anything anymore. And uh, that's pretty much all the time we have. So, uh, then there's now some song playing uh, in the background. And as we leave to the to that music and finally a hopefully successful video, I close out. This is Sierra Games Scott. I will see you next time.